Hello everyone, and welcome to your fourth Swift programming tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can work with tuples or tuples in Swift. From now on, I'm just going to refer to them as tuples, although I know some people do refer to them as tuples. I've just learned them as tuples, and so for me to try and switch that in my head, just more than I want to take on. So uh, you can learn them however you want, but uh, I'm going to say tuples. So what is a tuple in Swift? Well, a tuple simply represents a collection of values that are very closely linked to each other. So maybe as an example, you're looking up somebody's name in a phone book, and you come across their name, and there's specific information that's tied to them, right? You have their name, their phone number probably, if it's a phone book, at least hopefully there's a phone number, and then you would perhaps have their address, right? So this is three pieces of information that would be very closely linked together, and you might want to represent this sort of as a group. And we can do that in Swift using a tuple. In my example, I'm going to use something slightly different just to show you that you can have different things other than strings. Um, you could represent perhaps getting somebody out of the uh, address book that you have. And your address book might contain their name, their phone number, and perhaps their birthday. So maybe you have their age sort of kept track in the address book, just as an example. So let's call this thing entry. And to start a tuple, you just create uh, parentheses like that. And all I want to say is this guy's Bob. That's his name. Then I want to have his phone number. So uh, we'll just give him some arbitrary phone number. There you go. And you guys can all go home and call Bob if you want and uh, see if he picks up. And then let's just say he's 22 years old. Okay. So with that, how can we get this information out, right? We just created this little grouping of Bob, his phone number, and his age. How can we get this out? Well, the simplest way is just to say entry dot the index of what you want to get. So this comes back to that zero indexing system that we work in when we're programming, right? Bob represents the zeroth index, and the other things are the first and the second. So to get if we get entry zero, we can see over in our output that we get Bob. If we do entry dot one, we get the phone number. And entry dot two, not surprisingly, is his age. So a very simple way to get the values. However, this isn't the most descriptive way, and it's not always uh, the easiest if you have to reuse these values a lot. So let's say, for example, we wanted to get all these values out of the tuple and assign them to their own variables. So perhaps we want to give the name or create a variable called Bob and his name and phone number could be represented with phone, and age could be represented with age. And to do this, there's very easy syntax. We don't have to assign each element to a new variable. We can simply say let, use the parentheses to represent that we're assigning a tuple, basically. We can say name, phone, and age. And then we can just say assign the entry to these values. So what we're doing is, this is known as decomposing the tuple. And all we're doing is we're taking the elements that are in the entry and basically breaking it apart and then setting the values into the ones we just defined here. So Bob will be mapped to the name, phone to the phone, and the age to the age. So if I want to use these now, I can just feel free to type them out and we can see all the values that are associated with them. And as you can see, they're the exact ones that we had in the tuple. Another uh, interesting th thing that we can do with this, though, is let's say, for example, we don't actually care about the age. What we can do with this is we can use the wildcard character, or the wildcard expression, which is the underscore. And this indicates that we don't actually want to use this value. We just don't care about it. And oftentimes you might not care about it. Maybe you just want to get all the names that you had in these entries. So maybe you have a, an array of entries or something and you wanted just to get the name of everybody in these entries. Well, to simply do that, you could just say name, underscore, underscore. Don't worry about the other parameters because you're, you're not interested in them. And uh, the wild the wildcard character makes this a little more clear. So if I include that, of course, I can't use that age variable because well, it doesn't exist. Okay, so that's just another neat thing that you can do with tuples. The last thing that I'm going to show you is naming the parameters when you create them. 
So what you can do is, let's say for example we wanted to represent the size of a rectangle. We could say let size be a tuple and we'll name each parameter. So we'll say the width and we just use colon and then the thing that we want. So width 10 and we'll say length and that could be 20 for example. Okay, so our size we have now defined to have a width of 10 and length of 20 and we can access each one of these by saying size.length or size.width. And as we can see, we get the output of each element that is in this tuple. So we're essentially sort of decomposing it, but this is a different way that we can represent it. If we name the parameters from the beginning, instead of using 0, 1, 2, we can actually use the names that we associated with that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any other questions on tuples, I know this was a pretty quick one, but it's all I really had to cover for tuples. That really explains just about everything you can do with them. We'll talk about how we can use these in functions and everything when we actually get to using them in functions, but you'll actually see the use of them in the next tutorial as well. So I figured I'd try and explain them now. If you have any questions, leave your questions in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Peace.